can Larry Bird play in today's NBA? So that's the topic of today's video, right? So I was thinking, I was at work yesterday, me and my manager, we was talking. And I like I say, you you guys know I've been heavily engulfed in the old school basketball reactions, right? So I got to thinking. And it's the biggest, this is like the biggest comparison that I've been seeing um a lot, like even not just YouTube comment, but as far as like um asking Hall of Famers or asking the current day players, do they think the the the, the legends of the past can play in today's NBA? And here's the thing. I strongly believe so, right? So it hit me yesterday. So I'm at work. I'm talking to my man, right? And I'm, you know, we, we, me and him, we have, we have mental gymnastics when it comes to sports, like all the time. That's all we do is just sit there and talk about sports. So we got to talking about basketball. And I told him, I was like, man, so you know, like the biggest questions that they like to ask: Could the legends of the past play in today's current NBA, right? And you know how they like to say this. So, you know, whenever it comes to the legends of the past, you know, the 80s and the 90s, they always say that they wasn't skilled players. You know what I mean? They just, it's almost like it was a barbaric style of basketball. That's how it's always portrayed. And I'm realizing because I was, I, me, I'm, I'm the newer generation, right? Um, I had to go back and educate myself on the legends of the past, the Larry Bird. You know, I always knew who these people were. I just never really seen them play. So I always knew who Bird was. I always knew who Magic was. I always knew who Mike was. Um, I always knew who Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was. Um, Charles Barkley, I always knew who Charles Barkley was. So I knew a lot of these guys. I just had never seen them play. So going back and watching um, the, a lot of these guys, especially Larry Bird, like, it's just like, man, these guys really was like that. They was really, um, you know, great basketball players, man. But the way it's always portrayed is if, if, as if it was more of a barbaric style of basketball, it wasn't any skill. So I got to thinking. So if you take current day basketball, right? So this is the analogy. I, this, 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 this is the comparison I used. So you, they'll ask, can Mike, could Michael Jordan play in today's NBA, right? And I say yes. And here's the reason why. Because if you translate... Mike from back in his era to current day basketball, who would he be? He would have been Kobe Bryant. What Kobe Bryant was in our style, because Kobe came in the back stretch of um of of, of the nineties. Like and I think Kobe what came into the league in ninety six. So he was the back stretch of old school going up into the two thousands. You see what I'm saying? So Jordan would have been what Kobe was. So you gotta think about it, right? So I even be seeing like how they, they talk about um three point shooting. So they always talk about three-point shooting percentage and stuff like that, right? So I learned two years ago from a lot of you guys that the three-point line didn't get implemented until like what? I think it was um, was it 85? I believe. Uh, correct me, in, correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section. I think it was 85 though, right? So the, obviously the shooting percentage three-pointer wise was not going to be high because it just it had just been implemented, right? And back then it was make the best shot. Take the bet, the higher percent of shot, right? Which it still is, but today in today's NBA, you just got a whole bunch of just jacking up threes. A lot of just three point shoot. Everybody want to shoot from the logo. Everybody want to shoot from the Steph Curry range, but everybody can't do that. So back in that time, for sure, for sure, we gonna take the higher percent of shot. So Bird might have only took one shot, one three pointer, or two three pointers at the most a game. That don't mean that he wasn't capable of hitting them at a higher rate. It just wasn't a high percent of shot. So obviously, we the coaches and every like the, the coaching. Back then, wasn't gonna push for that because it wasn't a high percentage shot. We'll rather you take closer shots. We'll rather you work your way in and get into the paint. We'll rather that than you to keep jacking up threes and it's costing us because we're missing and now we're having to get on fast break. Now we're having to constantly keep running, right? So not to get off topic though, but getting back to the comparison, right? So you got Kobe. Mike would have been what Kobe was, right? And if you look and look at, and this is something that it took me to do, right? So everybody was so sold last year um, on the Cole Jokic. Well, over the last few years, obviously. But I hadn't been keeping up with them. So whenever I'm talking to people, they talk about Nicole Jokic this, Nicole Jokic that. And in my mind, I'm thinking like Nicole Jokic ain't, you know, like I'm because I'm looking at the, the, the physical presentation. I'm talking about looking at him. He don't look much, like much besides, you know, just a tall center, the typical, you know, prototype tall center, right? So I, everybody just kept bragging on this dude. So it took me to watch him myself in the finals against Miami and just seeing how he had an answer for every defensive scheme that Miami was sending in. He was able to make adjustments. They wasn't able to contain him, right? And I got to thinking, the more and more I watched Bird, Bird, would into, if Bird played in today's NBA, he would have been a Nicole Yoke style player. 
And my, when I see when I brought this up to my manager, when we was talking yesterday, he's like, he don't see it. And I was like, bro, what you mean you don't see it? It's like it, it's similarities within it because neither, like, if you're looking at, like I said, if you're looking at the eye test, right? Neither one of them passed the eye test in terms of when you see a certain person come on the court, you automatically be like, man, I think this mother, this motherfucker here good. When you see certain people come on the court, you think to yourself like, ah, this is gonna be easy. Which I, I know one of the Hall of Famers said that when he had to go up against Bird, he was like, oh, this is gonna be easy, and Bird ended up busting his butt. So, it, it, but so it, they don't pass the eye test. But when you look at the way that they play the game, it's similarities. Now, granted, Bird was different um, from Nikola Jokic in terms of the hustle. You know what I mean? Bird brought that type of energy, and it's like. Even um, with my manager, he was saying that he was like, um, he just wasn't all that to me. And I was like, bro, I was like, it's, it's not necessarily about the skill. See, y'all focus so much on skill, right? So the thing about Bird that I noticed from watching Bird for, for, for about two years now was that Bird had a, a, a passion, a drive to win like no other. You know what I mean? This guy, like like I say, this guy dies for loose balls that's going out of bounds, and he know he's probably not going to be able to get to it in time, but he still makes the effort to get it. He put his body on the game. He put his body on the line game after game after game. Like I was telling my manager, you take um, the season before Bird came, man, I think they might have barely won 20 games, right? And you fast forward to a year later when Bird come, you take that team and 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 and, and is able to convert that over to a 60 some win team. Do you know how strong of an influence you have to be to be able to come in and lead a group of grown men who were playing piss poor the year before and say, hey, we changing this around. This losing culture, this ain't acceptable no more. We are gonna go out there and we are gonna give 110% effort. And that's what it was. And it's like, I, a lot of it was that he led by example too. You see what I'm saying? When you see your star player like Bird, hustling and going harder than the people who are trying to earn starting spots and earn a position on the roster, it brings a different level of competition or a different level, a different approach to the game because our best player is doing the stuff that a lot of us are complaining about doing or a lot of other stars complaining about doing. When you look at it, and that's like when you look at today's league, and that's why I say to kind of get back onto can old style players play to the old, the legends play of today's game? Absolutely. Because when I look at the game today, and look at how the game today is played. It's not a lot of people you see with that killer, that 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 passion to I got I, I want to win, I want to be the best. Don't a lot of people have that? And it's like everybody is so focused on just the the individual accolades. You see what I'm saying? Like I was just looking at an interview, like literally right before I filmed this video, and they was talking about the other night when um Carl Anthony Towns dropped sixty some points, and the guy was just saying like. All of that is okay, but they still lost the game. And he was like, and if you look at the game, everybody was constantly feeding Cat, constantly feeding him, constantly feeding him. So he can hit though that that the individual goal of 60 points. So it's not about winning. It's not about putting ourselves in a better position going into the playoffs. It's about stat sheet stuffing. And that's a lot of what you see around today's NBA. Like when you look at, like I say, one of the things that I, re I respect so highly of Bird is that when Bird had the opportunity to, to – um, set records or like even with the quadruple double um situation he had his opportunity to maybe get that and they was like we want to put you back in because if you get i think was two more steals you got a quadruple double and larry bird was like no i don't want i don't care about that if it comes it comes i'm not worried about individual accolades i'm worried about winning so if i gotta score 20 points and have 30 assists that's what we gotta do to win if i gotta score two points and have 50 assists that's what we gotta do to win and if that's what we got to do to win, then I'm willing to do that. So it's just like the, the newer style, the newer, the newer generation of players, they just don't have that dog in them like the like the old school players back in the day. You know, and it's just like when I watched it, when I watch the old school reactions, man, I see a different level of intensity. I see a different level of competitiveness. Like it was like it was war every game. You know what I mean? Even if you go back and look at the bird. Oh, the Celtics and the Sixers um, doc, the, the series. And I seen snippets from that. And I plan on doing a full reaction to that series um, as well, by the way. But it's just, it was a different level of competition, man. And it's like, that's why I say like, yeah, obviously because the guys back then, they have the mental fortitude to be able to withstand today's NBA because today's NBA is soft. Now, like I said, you got to think about it. The, where, 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 we were, where we were at as far as training, as far as... um. Help self-improvement in terms of being an athlete 
putting the right stuff in your body, having the right stuff accessible to us. It wasn't that back then. Those guys were smoking cigarettes, snoring cocaine. Some of, this, some of them doing this stuff at halftime, drinking beer. And it was different. So now with the, with the infrastructure that we got in terms of um, athlete recovery and athlete advancement, if you give those guys that same type of, those type of advantages, you got doing right, they'll be able to not only play, they'll be able to dominate. Because if they taking that old school mentality and not saying fouling or anything like that, like people that say, oh, that's all they was doing. No, it was aggressiveness. It was, it was an aggressive style of play call. It was an aggressive style of uh, playing the game, right? But they already got their mentally conditioned to go through that. And you put them in today's um, league with the advancements that, they, that these players got, Come on, man. Come on, man. Like, you know what I mean? So that shouldn't even be a question. But I'm realizing that most people who say some of this absurd stuff that they say, they're either A, chasing clout, and they just trying to get views, or B, they have no idea of the legends of the past. And I was one of them. And I never talked down, but I'm just saying I was one of them. You know, but just why, doing these bird reactions and doing these old school reactions have kind of converted me over to being an old school basketball fan. You know what I mean? But that is it for this video, man. I didn't want to talk y'all to death too much. I just wanted to kind of get that out while it was on my mind. I wanted to make this video yesterday, but when I got out of work, I was exhausted, bro. So I just came home and I um, just chilled and went to sleep. So I was like, man, I got to go and get this video out. But I also have another bird video dropping today too. So stay tuned to that. And you know, like how, you know, like how I always do, man. I didn't do it at the intro. I saved it for now. If you did enjoy this video, man, do me a big, big, big favor, man. Smash that thumbs up button. Also, if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. When you subscribe, make sure that my post notification bell is on and where you be notified on all things Rob Sports Center. Because just like I say who, just like I said, like the Go Drizzy Drake say, I'm coming back to back with these videos, man. I'll see you in the next video.